Good afternoon, or should I say evening, uh, morning, morning? At any rate, I am the Game Master, pleased to make your acquaintance. Before we begin, there is something I must tell you. You see, my job is to draw you into this world with my voice and cards, which is why I believe it best for you to play with the sound on. In fact, I insist on it. However, as you can see, my voice is subtitled, so you can always read along as well. Now then, are you ready? Let's begin. <clears throat> Welcome to Voice of Cards. You are about to take the first steps of your adventure. Through a realm of sword and sorcery you will travel, battling bloodthirsty monsters as you strive to realize your ambitions. I have every faith you will accomplish great things here. I... I am merely a witness to your exploits. Now then, your departure draws nigh. May your journey be a safe one. This is Castle Advent. Queen Nilla reigns over the kingdom from within its walls. Three white-clad adventurers have gathered here at the Queen's summons. Present yourselves, O oh faithful of the Ivory Order. From upon her throne, the queen regards the adventurers. So you are disciples of the Order. The youngest of the three steps forward. She holds herself with well-born grace. I am Winifred of the Ivory Order, your majesty, she says. I lead this fellowship. She bows, glancing to her two companions. In response, the stern-looking one inclines his head and brusquely names himself Berwin. The older man is the picture of courtesy as he genuflects and introduces himself as Hedwin. It is these three our story follows today. In other words, your party. The queen acknowledges the fellowship with a nod. In a soft voice, she explains her errand. Someone has stolen the royal treasure. I bid you reclaim it. Under normal circumstances, I would entrust this to my soldiers, but I do not wish to spread thin my forces with the recent monster troubles. It seems the troubled queen is judged she can entrust this matter to none but the Ivory Order, beloved of the people and unmatchable in battle. It is our honor to serve you, your majesty, and thus the quest falls to the Fellowship. Short of any clues that could lead them to the culprit, however, they press the queen for further information. The Fellowship asks the Queen if she knows anything about the thief. The Queen says witnesses might be found at Nexton. The Fellowship asks the Queen what the royal treasure is. The Queen describes a bottle containing a certain liquid. 
Without it, she trails off, but the desperation in her voice suggests its loss could spell disaster for the kingdom. Usually, one would expect recompense for this sort of undertaking. As demanding a reward would go against the tenets of the Ivory Order, you hold your tongue. The Queen, however, has already said she will reward the Fellowship with whatever they desire. It seems the royal treasure is just that important. Pray Terry no longer here. I await news of your success. The Fellowship bows and takes their leave. We can waste no time finding the treasure, Winifred strides toward town. Wait, cries Berwin, blocking Winifred's path. A monster. You dare stand in our way? Edwin scowls at the foul creature. It lunges at the fellowship. Winifred heaves a disgruntled sigh as she smooths her rumpled garb. Showing no signs of weariness from battle, Berwin silently wipes the monster's ichor from his weapon. Edwin inspects the remains of their foe. The queen spoke true, he mutters, his face masked in contemplation. Winifred gives a grim nod at his words. Mayhap the treasure's theft and the monster's behavior are connected somehow. First things first, the Fellowship needs to gather more information. To Nexton, they set their sights. I'm too scared to leave town with all those monsters out there, the woman sighs. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome to Nexton, Hail's a Man. The man doesn't respond to any question except to parrot back his original greeting. The man helpfully advises you take the opportunity to purchase equipment and curatives while you are in town. A woman sits hunched over by the side of the road. Upon catching sight of the fellowship, she calls out for their aid. She sprained her ankle and needs you to take her to the nearby apothecary. Winifred rushes to her and helps her up. Berwin lifts the woman onto his back, and the Fellowship sets out in search of an apothecary. You arrive at the apothecary. After taking a curative, the woman begins hopping up and down. Nothing holds a candle to ivory order medicine, she beams. She turns to the fellowship, her eyes widening in surprise. You three. It seems she's only now realized the Fellowship are disciples of the Ivory Order. The woman takes each of their hands in turn, thanking them for their service. The Ivory Order is famous for providing medical supplies throughout the realm, and indeed the wider world. Every smile the Order brings to someone's face makes Winifred proud to be a disciple. The man claims he saw a suspicious someone leaving the castle grounds carrying what looked to be a medicine bottle. He didn't get a good look at their face, but says they were nothing but skin and bone. The Fellowship thanks the man for the useful information. The woman begs the Fellowship for their autographs. She seems to greatly admire the Order. I know there's nothing to worry about with disciples of the Order here, she says, relief flooding her features. Upon asking, the woman says she was attacked by a monster outside of town. A strange creature, she says, nothing but bones, and it clutched a bottle of medicine as if its life depended on it. A 
Apparently, there's a monster lurking around the outskirts of town stealing medicine, and only medicine. Rumors claim the monster fled to the west. Thanks to the information gleaned from the townsfolk, the Fellowship is all but certain of who has stolen the royal treasure. The first clue was the Queen's description of the treasure, a small bottle containing a certain liquid. Then there's the bony figure seen fleeing town, the skeletal monster clutching the bottle of medicine, and the monster that fled west. From all that information, the Fellowship distills the thief's true identity. Realization strikes Winifred. I know who our thief is. The monster made of bones, Hedwin interjects. The one that fled west. Erwin nods in agreement, as if to say, another sage pronouncement from the great and wise Hedwin. Winifred clears her throat, proclaims that the Fellowship shall head west, out of town, and walks off. How may I help you? The proprietor inquires. Will that be all? The proprietor asks. How may I help you? The proprietress inquires. Will that be all? The proprietress asks. How may I help you? The proprietress inquires. The apothecary catches sight of the fellowship. Ah, the ivory order, to which I owe the prosperity of my humble shop, she says. She gestures to the drawers filled with her wares. Pray, choose one of my concoctions and take it at no cost. It shall be a token of my thanks to the order. The fellowship insists they will pay as any other customer would, and sets about browsing her wares.
Will that be all? The proprietress asks. Don't hold back. Let's not go there just yet. I haven't quite finished the story for that section, you see.
Congrats. Our rock appeared. It seems primed to explode. The bizarre rock transformed into a gold rock. Fellowship moves westward, only to be unnerved by the sight of a human figure moving through the trees. The presence of large packs suggests a traveler. I beg your pardon, but did you catch sight of a monster fleeing west? Winifred inquires. He gives her a puzzled look. There's nothing out there but the sea, he says. That, and a cave full of monsters on the opposite shore. I suspect you might find your quarry there. The Fellowship exchange glances and nod, as if to say, Then that is where we shall go. Alas, they will need a boat to cross the sea. The Traveler hoists his packs, suggests the Fellowship speak to the fishermen on the western shore, and takes his leave. Don't hold back. Bizarre rock transformed into an aqua rock. The only way out of this fight is through it. Let's do this.
You make your way to the inn, where you're greeted with a hearty hello by the owner. You're from the Ivory Order, aren't you? Thanks to a royal decree, you're allowed to stay the night for free. And you're not about to refuse such hospitality. The party leaves the inn feeling rested. Fellowship comes upon an anchored ship. Close by, a fisherman of exquisite physique hauls a net out of the water, his muscles rippling. This is no time for lustful reverie. Winifred races to his side and asks that he give the Fellowship safe passage aboard the ship. That vessel is cursed, the fisherman mutters, trembling. Night after night, it leaves port without a soul aboard, headed I know not where. Come morning, it is once again anchored here. This, to the fisherman's mind, is the result of a curse. His head drops into his hands. With but a single dispeller, I am certain I could lift it and sail away. Alas, the Fellowship find themselves without any dispeller. They resolve to return to Nexton and find some. thing's been poisoned. You may be able to aid it by administering some antidote. You take pity on the creature and administer some antidote. Healthy once more, it gets up and makes its way to who knows where. Every so often, you catch it looking back at you. But before long, it's out of sight. An innocent-looking young boy accosts the Fellowship. Want to play a game with me? He asks expectantly. 
much. In this parlor, you can play cards. The child rambles on, wheedling you. I'll give you this if you play with me.
Thanks for playing, the boy squeals. He hands over the medicine bottle as promised. Winifred hands the despairing fisherman a dispeller and asks again for safe passage to the cave beyond the sea. The fisherman snatches up the concoction, so delighted that his pectoral muscles begin twitching. The fellowship politely ignores this fact. He opens the bottle and proceeds to douse the ship. Are you ready to set sail for the cave? The fisherman asks. How will you respond? Let's shove off then. He beckons you aboard. The fellowship arrives at the mouth of a dank cave, its damp, rocky expanse threatening to swallow them. Monsters could come pouring out at any moment. The fisherman has anchored the ship in the cove. Come back here when you're ready to return to the mainland, he says. Don't hold back.
about the enemy. the enemy. before you is shut quite tightly. It appears to have a keyhole. The simple key may be of use here. The Fellowship slides the simple key into the keyhole and turns it. The lock opens with a thunk. rather conspicuous handles. Berwin pushes the massive handles against the door with all his might. It moves not an inch. Berwin gives the door a roundhouse kick out of pure frustration. As his foot connects, the door trundles to the side. So it was one of those sliding contraptions. <laughs> 
Something leaps out at the Fellowship from the darkness. Winifred deftly parries the attack with her staff. Edwin looks fondly at Winifred, only to have his reverie interrupted by Berwyn's cry of, It's coming back. And fight. approaches the chest, only for a voice deep as an earthquake to echo through the cavern. You shall not have it, a voice growls. The Fellowship warily eyes their surroundings as several somethings leap out of the shadows. Fortune favors the bold. Winifred neatly steps through the fiend's remains and opens the chest. Inside is what appears for all the world to be an ordinary medicine bottle. At last, the royal treasure is in safe hands once more, Edwin sighs. Winifred and Berwyn nod in agreement. Treasure in hand, Fellowship exit the cave, exalted. In time, the Fellowship find themselves before the Queen once more. They offer her the retrieved treasure. As reward for the arduous task of returning our prized possession, I bid you name anything you desire, she proclaims. She is positively beaming and seems prepared to shower the Fellowship with riches, whether they demand them or not. But at that moment, a massive roar, the likes of which had never been heard before, 
shakes the entire castle. As the roar recedes, one of the royal guard, pale as a sheet, bursts into the royal hall. He struggles to gather his breath. Just now, over the castle, a... a dragon, he pants to Queen Nilla. A dragon. So the great evil has returned. Queen Nilla turns her gaze to the sky, dumbfounded. So the monster troubles are connected, Edwin says so under his breath, so the queen does not hear. A profound silence settles over the royal hall. The fellowship stand tall, unflinching, as though they know what must be done in the face of such a crisis. of the land now that the dragon has returned. I'm afraid that will have to wait. We're all out of time for this portion of the adventure. Don't you worry. We'll continue the tale another time. I look forward to our next session. Until then, I bid you good day. Farewell, friend.